Climate change is real. It is happening right now. We are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. The people most affected by climate change are no longer some imagined future generation, but young people alive today. There is no plan B because we do not have planet B. Hello, welcome to 2084, and we are in Hebden Bridge celebrating all the amazing things that the people in the 2020s did to ensure that our children had a prosperous future. Scientists in the 2020s could see into the future and could tell what would happen if nothing was done about climate change, and it would be catastrophic. And so they pledged to their children that they would do everything they could to combat climate change. They realised it was not just enough to be aware of climate change, but they had to take action too. The people of the 2020s were the first generation to feel the effects of climate change and the last generation that could do something about it. However, the people of the 2020s did everything they could to stop the catastrophe and they stabilised the climate. In fact, the Earth is even better in 2084 than it was before. With no fossil fuels, the air is clean, and therefore people are healthier and live longer. There are homes, water and food for everyone. Our world is now a safe and secure place, all because of our ancestors. In the 2020s, people realised they were in a climate emergency tipping points approach, which meant that climate could spiral out of control, at which point humans could do nothing to stop it. So they took on the 55 gigaton challenge. This was to reduce the annual human output of greenhouse gases, which was 55 gigatons a year to zero by 2050. This meant that 28 years. The people of the 2020s knew that the challenge of climate change wasn't about the science, or what to do about it, it was actually doing it. And one of the things they found was that one of the best things that they could do was vote for climate. That was putting people in government who would make policy changes. Adults and children could be active to bring climate change to the top of the agenda. Once policies were put in place, markets would respond. Things like carbon tax, climate-led building regulations, insulation, voting for climate, charging infrastructure, circular economy. Only governments could put them in place. In the 2020s, the 20 richest countries in the world, known as the G20, or the Group of 20, made 80% of greenhouse gases. The injustice was that the rest of the world who had not created the greenhouse gases would be the worst affected. The G20 led the way in combating climate change and helped developing countries with money and technology to transition to green energy and economies. They helped them adapt to the challenges that climate change would bring. In the 2020s, Denmark inspired the world in how to transition to renewable energy. From the 2020s, they would give no new licenses for fossil fuel extraction and pledge to stop production entirely by 2050. They would instead harness the wind, the sun and the tides, just as the Vikings had done. This meant that industry stopped investing in fossil fuels and started investing in renewable energy and green solutions. In the 2020s, climate-led building regulations were put in place by government policy so that everything would be electrified. There would be building regulations to make buildings more energy efficient, solar panels would be on the roof, there would be plenty of insulation. Car charges were everywhere. Buildings would create their own energy, be more efficient and climate resilient, even carbon negative. In the 2020s they realised they couldn't use batteries for everything. They couldn't use them in planes because they couldn't take off. They couldn't use them in big things like ships because they wouldn't be able to take any cargo. So they developed a technology called Power to X. This is where renewable energy is made to make the element hydrogen. 
then green hydrogen itself could be combined with carbon captured from the atmosphere to make a liquid fuel. This is very similar to diesel or petrol because it's using captured carbon, it adds no carbon to the atmosphere. That was then used to power planes, ships and big lorries. In the 2020s, 76% of greenhouse gases were carbon dioxide and 16% was methane. But methane is 30 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So the people of the 2020s made a huge effort to get rid of methane. Now methane can come from various places. One is gas leaks, but that was kind of taken care of anyway because we got rid of fossil fuels. And it can also come from things like cows burping. That was reduced by giving cows a better diet and also because people just ate less meat. In the 2020s, we had an unsustainable linear economy. This meant that we would take products, use them once and then dispose of almost everything. Then the government had to bring into law to use a circular economy. And an example was where we would get a product, we'd use it once, and then it would actually be cleaned, relabeled, refilled, and then put back on the shelves. And this was already done with milk bottles, wasn't it, mate? Could be done with your dog food as well. The people in the 2020s realized that they had to move towards a more plant-based diet. The Independent Committee for Climate Change, who advised the UK government, said that people had to reduce their meat intake by 35% by 2050. Beef, in particular, creates loads of greenhouse gases because cows burp methane and they use up loads of land for grazing and also for the food to feed them. For instance, one kilogram of beef creates 60 kilograms of carbon dioxide, whereas an apple creates half a kilo. And then when people used less land, it meant that land could be reused for rewilding and planting forests. In the 2020s, they had to reduce carbon to zero but they also realised they had to capture carbon from the atmosphere because there was basically far too much of it. Trees are a really good example of something that's amazing at capturing carbon, but most of the carbon is in the living, growing tree. And when it falls over, a lot of that carbon is released when it decomposes. So the people in the 2020s developed technologies to preserve the carbon in the wood and not let it rot away. One was a house made of sticks. This was an actual building made in the 2020s where it was 18 storeys high in Norway. And then there was the gift from the Amazon which was biochar. The ancient Amazonians used biochar, which is basically charcoal in the soil, to help hold nutrients and also help hold water. But it was also really good at locking the carbon into the soil for hundreds of years. So here we are um, with the live cab, which is a beaver helping us with climate change. So for a long time, uh, climate change has been known about, but fossil fuel companies have basically put out disinformation which had let us believe that it wasn't true, but it actually is. So the people in the 2020s were faced with climate change, so they had to do things to adapt and become resilient. And one of the things they could do was slow floodwaters. So here we have beavers to the rescue, so people can help beavers to chop down the little trees and make dams, which also help to slow flood waters, make better habitat. The people in the 2020s made pledges to the people of 2084. Pledges about all the things that they would do to save their future. And those videos would be played in exactly the same place at exactly the same time in 62 years. And they would be talking basically to their descendants and to their own children. So my climate pledge uh, for the future is trying to use less plastic uh, in the daily sort of things that I use today. We pledge to use more renewable energy and we pledge to waste less water and food. I'm with the Ra family and we're going to try out to recycle, renew and reuse everything we can. And we're going to use solar panels for our house and we're going to plant more bee-friendly plants and grow more produce. I'm George and we live in Hebden Bridge. Um, I like walking to school and not losing the car because losing the car is um, 
It's not very good for the planet. Look at the rabbit. Thank you. Good luck, future people. Bye. Bye.